Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to Word Up. Uh, lovely to have you with us. If you're joining us live on Facebook, it's great to have you. If you're watching the recording, I uh, hope you enjoy, and maybe you're listening to the podcast. So it's good to have you. We're going through our study of Mark's Gospel, myself and Pastor Akin. Lovely to have you with us, Pastor Akin. How are you doing? Oh, thanks very much, Pastor Ian. I'm very well, thank you. Great to be back again, and uh, how are you? Yes, I'm well, thanks. Yes, I'm um, still taking in that great word from this morning's service yes. from Pastor Mary. Yes, and uh, yes. it was all about <laughs> taking Jesus at his word, wasn't it? Take yes. Jesus yes, at absolutely. his word. And, and that is what Word Up <laughs> is all about, in fact. So it's a, it's a great intro to today's session, taking Jesus absolutely. at his word. Yes. And I was um, reminded of the, the very beginning of John's gospel, where it says, in the beginning was the word, talking of Jesus, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And, and that's talking of Jesus. So, you know, when we're coming, we're, we're, when we surrender to Jesus, we surrender to his word. And that's what words, Word Up's about. It's sitting under the word and, um, you know, getting to know Jesus more, God more, through his word. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes, Lord. yes, that's <laughs> correct. Yes, Pastor. And just to just to, you know, just to, to add to that, just the, the word this morning was absolutely amazing. And um, yeah, like you've right, rightly said, the word is not. It's not that we, like we've said before. It's not like reading a novel or any other book that you can read and think, "Oh, that's nice." Or that's it. this is the living word of God. Yeah, and it has the ability to change and to transform our lives. So we come with humility to the word and receive what God has for we us. We do. We do. Yes. On that note, let's ask God to illuminate His word to us together. Yes. Heavenly Father, we do thank. Thank you for the gift of your word. Your word is your mind, your thoughts, your gift, your revelation to us. And we treasure it, Lord. We thank you for it. And we ask you to just illuminate it today by your Holy Spirit to every one of us. Let us know you more. We, we ask you for the grace as we study in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Lovely to have you see you coming on there. Right, we're picking up. We were studying uh, Mark, and we've got to, let me think now, we're into chapter 2, and we've got through to um, verse 18. Thanks. So we were uh, really looking last week at um, the whole aspect of Jesus, the friend of sinners, Friend of the tax collectors and sinners, known as friend of sinners. And, you know, he said in the last verse that we looked at, you know, Jesus said, it's not a health, not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Anyway, picking up from verse 18, I'm going to read right through our se section that we'll be studying tonight. So from verse 18 onwards. Now John's disciples and the Pharisees were fasting. Some people came and asked Jesus, how is it that John's disciples and the disciples of the Pharisees are fasting, but your disciples are not? Jesus answered, how can the guests of the bridegroom fast when he is with them? They cannot, so long as they have him with them. But the time will come when the bridegroom will be taken from them, and on that day they will fast. No one sews a patch of unshrunk cloth on an old garment. If he does, the new piece will pull away from the cloth, making the tear worse. And no one pours new wine into old wineskins. If he does, the wine will burst the skins, and both the wine and the wineskins will be ruined. No, he pours new wine into new wineskins. One Sabbath, Jesus was going through the cornfields, and as his disciples walked along, they began to pick some ears of corn. The Pharisees said to him, Look, why are they doing what is unlawful on the Sabbath? He answered, Have you never read what David did when he and his companions were hungry and in need? In the days of Abiathar, the high priest, he entered the house of God and ate the consecrated bread, 
which is lawful only for priests to eat, and he also gave some to his companions. Then he said to them, The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. Chapter 3, verse 1. Another time he went into the synagogue, and a man with a shriveled hand was there. Some of them were looking for a reason to accuse Jesus, so they watched him closely to see if he would heal him on the Sabbath. Jesus said to the man with the shriveled hand, Stand up in front of everyone. Then Jesus asked them, Which is lawful on the Sabbath, to do good or to do evil, to save life or to kill? But they remained silent. He looked round at them in anger and deeply distressed at their stubborn hearts, said to the man, stretch out your hand. He stretched it out and his hand was completely restored. Then the Pharisees went out and began to plot with the Herodians, how they might kill Jesus. There we are. That's the passage we're looking at. I went right through there to uh, chapter 3, verse 6, because there's a theme running through here, um, particularly about observing the Sabbath, but also observing, um, you know, religious uh, rules and and activities. But let's, um, let's get right back to it. Verse 18. About the fasting, John's disciples and the Pharisees were fasting, and then they asked Jesus, how is it that your disciples are not fasting? So um, what do we think about this? What's going on here, Pastor Akin? I mean, um, why why wasn't Jesus? Everyone else is fasting. There's obviously a kind of major, you know, there's a, there's a certain religious festival going on. We don't, we're not told what it is, but there's generally a fast at that time. And yet Jesus... And his disciples are not fasting. They're the only ones. Yes. What's going on? <laughs> not, not, not observing these um, not observing. Yeah. <laughs> these religious rules and regulations. I mean, how dare he? That, that was their, <laughs> their attitude, you know. It's like, yeah. um, here we are. We are the, the true, um, you know, believers in the covenant that God had made with, um, with the people of Israel. That the, through the laws that had given to Moses and the, the Pharisees. In fact, it's, it's, it's interesting to, to, to see that... Um, you know, in, in some of the comments that I've been reading, that the, the Pharisees were actually, they were highly respected yeah. as in, in the, those religious, yeah. um, you know, uh, positions that they had at that time. So they, it wasn't that they were people that were despised, if you like, by the, the Jewish people. They were actually quite highly respected. Yeah. And uh, they just couldn't get their heads around if that, how Jesus, if he actually was who he was claiming to be, then how, for, I guess when one says, how, why did he not acknowledge them, first of all, that, um, you know, the, you, these people, they are... Uh, I can see that you guys, you know, you're really f- on God's side. You're doing all the right things. And, uh, you know, I agree with all the things that you're doing. As we, as we were looking at last week, Jesus wasn't called the friend of the Pharisees. <laughs> he was known as a friend to the sinners. And yeah, um, yeah. we can see that there is this, uh, this, this escalating, um, if you like, head to head with Jesus and the Pharisees. And so here they are. They, they, they are coming to him and saying, look, what, 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 we're fasting. John's disciples are fasting. So how come you and your disciples, why are you not fasting? And it's interesting that the he, he draws a picture here and he says that, you know, uh, I know that in one uh, translation it says guests. In another it says the friends of the bridegroom. But whether they were guests or, or friends, you know, yeah. it, there's, there's that relationship with those people who are with the bridegroom. And Jesus is, is drawing on that, uh, that analogy, that relationship. Again, he's, he's trying to emphasize the importance of the relationship. And he's saying that, you know, while, you know, whether we call them guests or friends are with the bridegroom, when, when the bridegroom is still there, they, they would not fast. And um, I was I was just reading a little bit of background into this that uh, you know weddings and in those days in the Jewish culture they weren't like the weddings that we have here they weren't just like a day or a few hour event they could, they could go on for days and during those days I also learned that even the rabbis that they if there was a wedding feast was going on yeah. the rabbis would give if you like um, exemptions to people yes. following the rules and regulations because they'll be like yeah. look there's a there's a wedding about to take place you know forget all these rules forget all these re- regulations you know you can have as much fun as you want you can drink as much as you want eat as much as you want have fun enjoy yourselves and I, and I was actually read that sometimes these weddings were like they were like a riot you know because people just did whatever they wanted to do yeah and uh, to, so as soon as Jesus brought that analogy to the people he was saying to them look even you you yourselves you know that when there's a wedding taking place mm. that all your rules and regulations are put to one side 
And uh, he was using that as a night to say, look, I am here, you know, as, as, the, as the bridegroom and these are my guests, these are my friends. So we, you know, this relationship, this, um, you know, this joyous relationship that we have while I'm here, it's going to go on and it supersedes all your rules and regulations, is what he was saying to them. Yeah. But however, he did stress that there would be a time, and he didn't say if, he says when, he says, when I leave, mm -hmm. then they will fast. But now while I'm here, yes. we're, we're just going to have, we're just going to have mm -hmm. a, a pass. We're going to have a party. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So in, in that way, he was saying that um, I am the bridegroom, the bridegroom, and, and, and these are my guests. And, and the Pharisees and, and the, the religious people of the day and the, the general people would, would have known the, um, that oh. analogy of, of God being the bridegroom and the, the Messiah being known as the bridegroom, the coming Messiah in the Old Testament scriptures. So it was another way he was saying that he was, you know, the the um, the Messiah come. Uh, he says it right through in different ways. You know, he says, um, you know, I am the 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 uh, we we had. I am the doctor. Uh, what was the yes. the physician, the great the physician? physician that's I am right, now yes. the bridegroom, and he's going to say it again. I'm Lord of the Sabbath, Sabbath and, and all these things. So, yeah, he's continually saying, yeah, how can the the guests of the bridegroom fast? So so when you said Jesus said, you know, when, I'm, when the bridegroom's gone, then they yes. will fast. So fast. Jesus was not against fasting per se. Not, no. And, and um, I mean, we can think of the Sermon on the Mount where he yes. addresses prayer and giving yes. and fasting and and you know he doesn't say if you fast and if you right. give and if you pray but when you fast when you That's pray right. but interestingly yes. just you know because we get a sense of of what he's saying in that um in in that sermon on the mount he says you know when you give to the needy do not announce it with trumpets like the hypocrites do but do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing it's a secret thing if you like it's a thing between the person and god it's a thing Absolutely. of the heart you know you're giving yes. for god for the sake of god you're giving to help people because you you love the lord and in the same with and when you pray do not be like the hypocrites do that you know do it on the street in front of everyone and want everyone to see them. But go into your room, close the door, pray to your father who is unseen and, and he will see and reward you. You know, he will see your prayers, hear your prayers and reward you. And then he goes on to say, when you fast, do not look somber like the hypocrites. You know, do not let everyone know, oh, I am fasting, I am fasting. And of course, this is what was going on a lot of yeah. the time in the religious sort of festivals or oh, everyone's fasting and Oh, you know, how's your fast going? Oh, yes, really, really good fast. It's really, oh, it's terrible fast. You know, so, I mean, just <laughs> Im imagine it. I, I, I don't know how it went. But no, the fasting, prayer, giving, these are all matters of the heart in, in relation to God. It's what Jesus was saying. This Absolutely. is about your choice to, yeah. to come to me, to worship me, to bring me something. You know, when you fast, yes, there are times for fasting when, you know, we really want to, we need to press in very, you know, want something urgently, sort of not just urgently, but um, what's the word, um, you, you know, s sincerely so, so much we, we pressing in for yes. that, um, you know, and, and so we might think to fast, to really press into some great need that we, we would have to seek the Lord for. But yeah, a, a lot of these religious, you know, he was sort of addressing the fact that some of these religious observances were more about doing things in front of people, more about, you know, um, pride and hypocrisy than, than a matter of the heart. So, and, and, and this theme, in fact, is, is going to go go on through this passage, really, of, <laughs> of a matter of the heart and yes. kind of religious activity. Let's yes, go, on. Seen, go on. Go on. Over I, to you, Pastor. Like you rightly said, Pastor, I think, it's, you know, that again and again, we've, we've been seeing this throughout this gospel, that Jesus is, is, is putting an emphasis on that relationship. And, um, you know, even in our natural relationships, you know, we, we don't we don't relate to one another with rules and regulations. So we, we don't, for example, have an ABC when we want to ask, you know, our best friend for something mm. or, you know, when we're talking to our spouse or, or you know, or, or our parents or our children. You know, it's relational. We know that. And this is what, you know, all of these examples that Jesus Christ has given, it's all about relation. You said that that that's the conviction of the things that we do. It starts from the heart. 
with that through that relationship that we can only have through Jesus Christ. And so he keeps on putting his emphasis on that, not on the rules, not on the regulations, not on the observance of a, the yeah. ABC of things, but on that ongoing relationship with the Lord as to how, you know, he wants us to conduct our lives. Yes, absolutely. And, and one of the problems was, and one of the things that Jesus actually um, uncovered and, and addressed in the scriptures was, was the many add-on laws that, that were, were added on by the religious teachers. They weren't from the God's law, but they were add-on, they were heavy, they were more, they were much more than actually God himself had required. And this even goes into the the, the Sabbath that we're talking about here. Yes. But um, yeah, so many, so many weird laws that were, were added on and that became very burdensome to the people and actually, you know, put put barriers in their way of, of coming to God and encountering God. And I think if we think of what... Um, Jesus said to his followers and disciples and everyone who was with him, you know, beware the yeast of the Pharisees. There's there's a danger of, you know, becoming religious in our, um, you know, adding to what God requires of us. Uh, you know, God said that we come to him by faith in Christ and that we are made righteous through faith alone. Uh, Romans 10, 4, Christ is the end of the law so that there may be righteousness for everyone who believes. That's right. Righteousness means you're right with God through faith in Christ alone, you know, and, and anything that we might add to that is is actually, you know, it's, it's adding to what God requires. And so we've got to be so careful mm. that uh, we don't add, like the Pharisees, to God's way. Okay, let's pick up on then. By the time we come to the bridegroom, yeah. And then it goes on to say, after the illustration of the the bridegroom, and, and it says, no one sews a patch of unshrunk cloth on an old garment. If he does, the new piece will pull away from the old, making the tear worse. And no one pours new wine into old wineskins. If he does, the wine will burst the skins and both. So what what's happening? What, why is he mentioning the... Um, the the old cloth. Now, now, sewing mm -hmm. an unshrunk piece of cloth onto an old garment. You know that that was talking about repairs that might be done for and, of yes. the clothes. You know <laughs> that were ripped and what have you. And it actually does show that um, you know Jesus was used to living in a household, maybe that um, you know had to mend and make do, and and you know was yes. not wealthy. <laughs> <laughs> but so he he was aware of this, but yeah, what's he talking about there? Would you say, Pastor Rackin? Yes. So look at I didn't I didn't pick up on the the point about the the the, uh, the clothing. That's that's very interesting. Yes, exactly. That rather than buy a new one, you uh, you know you try and patch up the old one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but um, again, when when we, we look at these um the, these two illustrations, Jesus talking about the the old and he's talking about the new. And um, he's, he's saying that they, they, they don't mix well, do they? they of the old things, whether, whether it's a, a, an old piece of cloth with, with a new piece of cloth, you know, old um, wine skins with new mm. wine, that they don't mix together. And uh, I think he was, he, again, he was making a point here that, um, you know, like you rightly said, that the, um, yeah, the Pharisees did have all these add-ons to what they were, they were adding to the Lord of Moses. Yeah. They were adding things on it. Like he had come, and like the scripture you said, he's the, he was the fulfillment of the law. And he was just said that you can't ma mix and match those old things with the new what that what I'm bringing, the, the, you know, the kingdom that I'm bringing now, the teaching that I'm bringing now, the gospel that I'm bringing, now, the new life that I've come to offer through uh, faith in, in me. That you can't mix that with this the old religion, you know, the old way that you've been doing things with all your rules and regulations. You know, again, when, when you referred to the Sermon on the Mount, when Jesus when he was talking, he said, "Well, you know, it is written in your law that you know thou shalt not kill." But then he went further than that. He said that if, I'm saying to you that even if you you know you hate your brother mm -hmm. or you say this to your brother that that's the same thing as murder and then he talks about the adultery as well so Jesus was going that much deeper than the as you said the outward things he was going right to the heart right yes, to the yeah. you know the thoughts of man he was going much mm -hmm. deeper than that and he was just you know making a point here that you cannot mix you know what the this old way of doing things this old style yes. of doing this religious yeah. way of doing things yes. it cannot be mixed with the new life mm -hmm that I'm bringing, that, that life that transforms someone from the inside out, and it's being born again. He hasn't, he hasn't said it here, yeah, we know in John's Gospel, he, he explains this to Nicodemus, but he 
he's just trying to say that this is what this is the life that I've come to bring to, to humankind now. They know that we've seen the way that you know humankind has have, have struggled with sin, with the issues of sin, and trying to have rules and regulation and trying to follow the law in our own strength. It, it, it doesn't work, it hasn't worked even up to this point when he was speaking to the Pharisees. They still, you know, they still hadn't realized that here was the, the Messiah, the, the fulfillment of all those laws and those rules and regulations that they had added on to the law, and yet they, they weren't able to grasp that. And he was coming to bring the note. I have come here that you may have life, as he said, uh, and have it in abundance. I've come to give yeah. you new life, the yeah. life of the spirit, the life that only mm. faith in me can give to you. So he yes, was just yes. saying that, no, you've got to put away with it, this old way of doing things. And you've got to mm. embrace this new life that I have to offer you. Absolutely. That's great. And um, in, in the one of the commentaries I was looking at, this is um, David Paulson's one. It says here, we are all creatures of the old wineskin. We've all developed ways of doing things. And he says, ah, well, we Baptists do it this way, you know, and so on. We've all got our old wineskins. We have our shrunken cloth. And sometimes Jesus comes to us saying that he's got something new and dynamic that will break open our form of worship. Um you cannot go on adding his religion to yours, his words to your traditions. It's all or nothing. We follow him and drop the rest. Yeah, I mean, um, so true, isn't it? You know, he brings the new life, the new ways. It's about relating to him, not about repeating, you know, um, religious activities that we're used to and thinking that through that repeated, you know, way of doing things where somehow pleasing, you know, God is a living God. He's, he's continually revealing fresh things and wanting to do fresh things with us. And I think we can, we can apply that very much so to, you know, what's happened even through the lockdown as we're going to be coming out of lockdown, you know, will there be things of the you know, that we might consider old wineskins that we need to change and, and you know, move into something fresh and new. But they, there we go. We, yes. we shall have to see. But I'm, I'm certain there are new things. It's whether new we things, yes. can um, <laughs> hear God and, and, and do we have the courage to, you know, put down some of the old uh, ways, as it were, to, yes. to, to receive the fresh. But there you go. Um, Time will tell. Yeah. Time will tell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Okay, so then one Sabbath, and then it goes, it talks about them going through the cornfields. So is there, they're, then they're going through the cornfields again on the Sabbath. And um, they start to take some of the corn, you know, because they're probably hungry, walking along and, and satisfy themselves, you know, eating the corn. And, and then the Pharisees said, look, why are you doing what is unlawful on the Sabbath? And, and so here again, we've got another example of this, you know, it is unlawful to... Now, the thing was, let's think about the Sabbath. What was the Sabbath? You know, the Sabbath was instituted by God on Mount Sinai with Moses. It was, you know, one of the, the Ten Commandments. It was one... It was, anyway, it was brought in um, to, to bless the people. Uh, they had just come out of 400 years of slavery under the Egyptians where, you know, they were worked to death. There was no rest. There was no Sabbath. There was no. And, and now he said, listen, from now on, you will one day a week, you will have a, a rest, a Sabbath mm. rest. It's for you. You know, this is to bless you. And, and yes, you will. You know, it'd be a time when you can you can be with me and just you and me. And so. This is what the Sabbath was about. But now here we got the Pharisees are adding to it. They're, they're making it mm. burdensome. Yeah. And, and uh. so what would have should have been, well, listen, on the Sabbath, there's no harvesting. There's no working on the farms. You know, everyone, yeah. let's rest. This is, was God's intention. But they've taken that to this little nth degree. You know, right, you can't even pick any corn. They added so many of these extra little rules. You know, they would even put these certain measurements. You can only walk this far. And they added so many um, burdensome rules to the Sabbath. But the Sabbath was a gift from God to hit the people, um, to bless the people, not to hinder them and burden them. 
so yeah, here we, we we've got this example, and then then Jesus came back to to them and said, "Look, don't you remember when David went in? He actually ate the shro the showbread um, that that was only for the priests, and and yet you know that's recorded in the Old Testament, and you know he was." if you like, blessed for doing it, you know, for, for helping him and his companions at the time. And then Jesus said, the Sabbath was made for man, mm. not mm. man, you know, for the Sabbath. Well, how do you understand that, that phrase? Because we, a lot of us would have heard that the Sabbath was made for man, but not man for the Sabbath. Yes. It, it, it's, it's um, again, what, what you, you rightly said there is, um, <laughs> it's, it's interesting when, when they said, you know what? Why do they do what is not lawful on the Sabbath? And it's interesting to see wh whose law were they actually talking about? Because when you yeah. when you look into the like you said the Ten Commandments, he didn't he didn't say all these things that they were talking about the you know the the, the how far they can go and what they can lift and all those sort of what they can carry and all that sort of thing. Yeah. I mean that wasn't that wasn't listed in, in the law. Just said remember the Sabbath, remember the Lord of the Sabbath. You know, remember yeah. it, it was like a reminder. It's again, it's a relationship, isn't it, for them not to forget. Mm. How yeah. God had brought them out of the of, out of Egypt, out of that slavery, and He was mm. taking them into the Promised Land. So yeah. He said, "Remember, it's it's holy unto the Lord." It's, so mm. that's why there was that separation for that. They knew that they were different from all the other nations around them. So, yes. like you rightly said, it was to bless the people, and it was for them to remember their God. It was for God mm. to bless them. But now, as you've rightly said, the the the, the, the Pharisees have added all these kind of laws. And uh, it was fun. I was reading some of them. They were saying that they added things like, you know, a man cannot carry some, something in his right hand or his left hand on his chest or across his shoulder. You know, he's not allowed even just to tie a knot. So he couldn't even go to the world and get water. They added all of these extra things onto it so that it, it became so burdensome that so the people could, you know, how could they, how could, is it possible for us to fulfill all these laws? And these are, like you already said before, these are the sort of things that separate people from God. When they're trying to get close to God, they want to have a relationship with God. And then you start to say, you can't do this, you can't do that, you mustn't go here, you mustn't touch this. And it's yeah. like it becomes so yeah. burdened so people begin to think, you know what, there's no way that I can draw close to a God who has got so many rules. and I can't keep these rules and regulations. And yeah. so they, they, they kind of like draw away from God and allow the Pharisees, if you like, to be the, the, the their intermediaries. And then mm. it's, it's like what Jesus Christ said. He says, you're, you, Pharisees, you're not going into the kingdom of God and you're hindering other people from going into the kingdom as well. Yes. Yeah. And so, um, but um, sorry, I, I just wanted to, to, to bring that thing back that when they were actually saying that the people were not obeying the, the, the law, it wasn't the law of God that, that, they, that they were not obeying. It was their laws, their rules and their yes. regulations that you've rightly said. And um, you know, when, when the Lord uh, responds and he's saying again that he is, that the, the, the Sabbath was not made for man, but, um, but uh, sorry, Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. He's again, he, he's trying to bring to them again this whole thing about, you know, you don't understand. You need to understand the spirit behind it. It's not this, yes, outward, uh, right. this outward application. Yeah. It's more to do with God. Mm -hmm. they, I think there were, there were certain concepts that, that the Pharisees couldn't come to terms with. So things like mercy. Things like forgiveness. Ooh, so like yeah. Jesus Christ, for example, wouldn't see somebody who was um, sick and then think, oh, today's the Sabbath day, so I won't heal this person. Oh, because he could have waited to the next day to heal people. He didn't have to heal them on the Sabbath or he could have healed them the day before. But he was trying to make them understand that, look, this yeah. isn't about this day being that this, you know, you can't do this on that day. You can't do you can't do this. But there is there's something a lot. There's something much more deeper than that. And mm. um you know, even the, the, the whole thing about, um, you know, what we can and can't do on the Sabbath, you know, in, uh, I think Paul had to address that at one point, didn't he? When um, yes. I think in, in Colossians 2, uh, 16 onwards, and he says there, he says, therefore, do not let anyone judge you by what you eat or drink or with regard to a religious festival, a new moon celebration, or even he actually said there, or a Sabbath day. Yeah. And then he goes on to say that these are a shadow of the things that are to come. The reality, however, is found in Christ. That's what he says. The reality is found in Christ. Yes, so yes, he's yes. re-emphasizing that Jesus is Lord of the Sabbath. The, he is. This day shouldn't yeah. be, you shouldn't be, you know, this day shouldn't dominate you to have, you know, like that kind of oppressive um, mm -hmm. influence over your yeah. life. Of, I can't do this. I can't do this. I can't be free. He said, no, that's why the Lord is saying that, 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 that the man isn't made for the day. But the day is made for the man. Yes, and it's all yeah. about, again, he's coming back to the relationship. It's, mm. it's about man having, uh, even as from the book of Genesis, having that dominion and having that authority. And it's not other things having, you know, festivals and new moon, even Sabbath, not having authority over the man. And um, again, in Romans 14, 5, Paul again says, one man considers one day more sacred than another. 
and another man considers every day alike. But he said each one should be fully convinced in his own mind. And I know we can, we can go further looking into that. But yeah. at the end of the day, what the Lord is saying, and listen, they're, they're in, in me, I am the Lord of the Sabbath. Yes. You know, and this is, all, it's all, this is all about me again coming to bring the new thing, the new life, the, the life where, you know, you, you have, um, I've given man the, the authority. We have that relationship and uh, that we have, um, you know, we have freedom. That's the thing. We have freedom yeah. not to allow these rules and regulations to dominate our life. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's, it's uh, I, I know you're going to touch on this, but it's also, it's also a, a warning for us as well as Christians yeah. that we, but there are no degrees, if, if you like, of, um, of spirituality. There, there are no mm -hmm. degrees whereby some person, if one person observes the Sabbath, another doesn't, and that makes you better than them. All, all of these kind of things that come into the, that can come into, you know, a congregation that can come into a church and bring division amongst Christians. It's That's like right. we're not yes. to, as, as Paul says, we shouldn't lose, uh, sorry, use our own freedom or liberty um, to, to, uh, to the detriment another brother or another sister, you know. We, you know we're, yeah. we're, we're, we are convicted through our relationship with God. The Holy Spirit is the one who brings conviction in our lives. If there's anything that we owe one another, it's, it's, as he says, it's the debt to love one another. And, and, and that's it. But uh, all these other things, you know, we have to be mm -hmm. careful of these things so they don't become a hindrance uh, to us, um, you know, walk in our walk with the Lord. Yes, it, it's um, I think, you know, what what happened here with with men, with the Pharisees, with the with the legalism is that men became proud, you know, and, and pride is, if you like, the, the key sin against God, you know, the pride of man and, and, and proud in their own activity and as, as if that their own activity was somehow making them right with God, their own actions, their own religious activity. They, look, I'm fasting this much and, and, and why aren't you, you know? And, 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 and so, you know, a bit like it's all about the heart attitude with, with God, um, as, as he showed in the Sermon of, of, on, on the Mount. And we've got to be so careful that we we don't pick up on this where, you know, it could be something that you feel like doing uh, for the Lord, fasting or or seeking God in a, and that's between you and between us and God. And it's, we should never be sort of looking at the next person and, and thinking to them, why aren't you doing this? Why aren't you doing what I'm doing? Why aren't, yes, there are times when we might say, hey, dear friends, you know, we're looking to have a time of communal, you know, of course, we, we come together to pray. We might decide, you know, we feel led to fast together and pray together. Um, but it, again, it's always um, a matter of choice to a person. You would never force it upon anyone because you, you cannot force a person to worship. You cannot mm. force a person because it's a matter, always a matter of choice, always a matter of freely offering the gift to God. If you cannot freely give something, whether it's praise, whether it's thanks, whether it's a love offering, whether it's fasting and in prayer, you know, then, then if, if, if we're, if, forcing people to do anything outward uh we, it's very dangerous ground and uh yeah i think you know jesus is is addressing some of these things and he says so the son of man is lord even of the sabbath um there he's saying you know again it, he's saying in a in a kind of slightly hidden way but it would have been obvious to a lot of people that i am the lord of the sabbath i am the messiah come i'm in charge of even the rules and the laws. I'm the lawmaker. I came up with the Sabbath, and it's up to me, you know, what happens on the Sabbath. And interestingly, the Sabbath was all about, you, you've alluded to it, was all about, you know, giving people space to to have their relationship with God, to be rem remember God, to uh, those things. And yet there was God, the Son of God, in their midst, and, and all about the Sabbath, you know, they were actually offending the Son of God. And they were, you know, they were totally missing it, weren't they, in their religious activity. Yeah. And, and that, that's, I guess that's, a, if you like you said, Pastor, that's a warning to us as well that, it um, is. you know, we might have our, um, sometimes our preferences for the way we want to, how we like to do things. But when we look into, into the Word, that's why sometimes when we say we look into the Word, the Word is actually looking into our hearts, isn't it? When we read the yeah. Bible... 
God is actually, it's, it's like he's looking into our heart to see what's mm -hmm. there. And when we can see things that we, even if it's a preference, I like to do this or I like to do that. or like, yes. it's, it doesn't, it, You know, we have to put that aside when you come to the Bible. See what's in the word of God. Yeah. And then if you find out that what's in your heart doesn't match up to that, then you have to make that change where you say, Lord, please forgive me. What I'm seeing in my life, it doesn't match up to what you are saying here. And uh, like you rightly said, there was Jesus and he was trying to explain to them that, you know, the Lord of the Sabbath is here. And he was explaining to them. I think he was making it in, in, in a language that they would understand that, you know, this is not this is what God has said about the Sabbath. And this is what you are saying about the Sabbath. And they're two different things. Yes, and I would yes. like you to this is an opportunity for you to bring, you know, you, you know, your life, your heart in line with what God is saying. But they continually refuse that. And we, yes, and we don't want to yes. be in that position. We no, want to humble no. ourselves to Absolutely. say, Lord. You know, yeah. all of my preferences, the way I like Absolutely. to do things. And I, I lay them get, all let's down. Get, let's get it. Get rid of the old. Let's you, just embrace Yes, them I the lay down have. all my preferences. Absolutely. So I think going forward, you know, when we think of why, you know, why are we here on the earth still? We've been saved. We're going to heaven for eternity. We've been invited by the Lord to, to co-labor with him in the great mission of God, you know, to win the lost, to reach people with their heart. You know, things like our preferences for, you know, how we do this, how we sing, how we gather, how, what type of chairs we sit on. You know, all these things can really come in the way of the mission. It's not about our preferences. It's about, you know, winning the lost and, yes, worshiping God together, but... Uh, so often, yeah, some of these religious preferences can get in the way. So let's be open to some of the new things ahead. We better uh, carry on so we can finish this section. Then we go into, again, it says another time in the synagogue. So we might think of this as another, it's a Sabbath. And um, we're in the synagogue, a man with a shriveled hand, and it says that the, the Pharisees, they're looking to accuse him. So they're watching, is he going to heal? And again, they can you believe it? You know, they're saying, if he heals on the Sabbath, he's breaking the rules. I mean, they're so missing the whole point, the spirit point. of mm -hmm. of God. You know, the, the yes. Sabbath is about God, about people, about love, <laughs> about justice, about loving one another. You know, the greatest commandment <laughs> to love. And yes. I mean, what greater way to love someone than set them free from the paralysis of disease? Mm -hmm. and, and, wow. and, you know, he, he knew what they were up to. Yes. And interestingly, how Jesus said to the guy, stand up in front of everyone. You know, he's going to make a point here. It's not just, oh, he healed him over there. Right, stand up in front of everyone. And then he asks them, you know, he's addressing this point head on. Look, what is lawful on the Sabbath to do good or evil, save life or kill? He's, he's making it so obvious there. Look, for goodness sake. Wow. Uh, yes. And, 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 and yeah. as you go on. I was just going to say, it's, it's, anyway, sometimes when I, we read these accounts, I'm all, I, I just kind of like look at myself because you see here, they, they actually said that they watched him closely to see if he would heal him on the Sabbath. And it, that means that they knew, they knew that Jesus Christ had yeah. the power to heal the man and he, because he'd healed before and they'd seen it. Yeah. So they actually had faith. You know, it's amazing. They actually had faith. That's why they were watching because it was like, you know, this man, he could, he's probably going to heal this man on the Sabbath, and they would get. So they, it was, it was amazing how when when one's heart is is, uh, yeah. is hardened, when one's heart is closed, that yeah. they they didn't realize that. You know, this they were in the presence of someone who obviously had the God was using him to to, mm. to heal people, and yet that wasn't their concern. They were more concerned about, like you said before, they were more concerned about their rules and their regulations being broken. They were more concerned about their preferences, their status. They were more concerned about that than the, than the man who had the wither of the hand, whose life has been impacted by this and who was about to be set free by God. They were more concerned about that. It, as again, it's one of these things where, like you've rightly said, the mission that we are called to, to see people saved. You yes. know, sometimes the way that it happens, we might not agree with it, we might not like, but are people getting yeah. saved? That's are right. Are people getting healed? Are yes. people, are yes. they, are they yes. worshiping God? Are their lives being changed? And transformed by the power of God. I mean, this fruit. If we, when we see this, and and if we we're not in agreement with the way it's happening, we have to question ourselves so yes. that we don't fall into the kind of Absolutely. like this, this, this yeah. hard heartedness that the the Pharisees fell into, where they were actually seeing Jesus was going to heal him, 
And uh, sorry, so, but I just wanted to think of that. They, they, they actually knew that he had the power to heal, but that wasn't of their, any concern to them. Yeah. They were so much more concerned about the, you know, their rules and regulations. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, they totally missed it. And, and so when he asked them the, the very obvious question, you know, what puts it right to do on the Sabbath, good, mm -hmm. or, good or bad, you know, save life or kill, it says they remained silent. <laughs> of course they couldn't answer. They, you know, he, he got them. He nailed it and and they remained silent and 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 they remained silent because of their pride as well mm -hmm. and and their evil intent and there it says in verse five jesus looked around at them in anger i mean this really got him angry you know righteous anger as we know and and also not just anger it says deeply distressed mm -hmm. at their stubborn hearts so so the here is a sign of of, of stubbornness, pride, and it's deeply distressing to God. So as you were sort of talking about there, some of these attitudes that we've got to be so careful that we're not, we don't slip into any of this kind of thing. And, and when Jesus talks about the yeast of the Pharisees, you know, yeast is is imperceptible, can't, can't really see it, it's so small, and yet it, it, it very you know, very surely but slowly affects the, the dough. It can affect, it can influence, it can, you know, seep into the attitudes and hearts of we've got to be so careful that, you know, this attitude and this kind of pride and religious attitude doesn't get into us and yeah. because it's wow. deeply distressing to God, you know. God, he, yes. He's looking for that heart to the lost, the broken, the poor, yes. those, you know, and and so he said to them, stretch out your hand. He says mm. to the man, rather, right, stretch out your hand. Yeah, stand up in front of everyone. He stretched it out, and his hand was completely restored. Wow. Yeah. Yes, it's, it's, it's such a passage. Like when we sometimes we think about what sort of things make God angry, and um, we don't, we wouldn't have maybe if we were asked if we would do like a, a Bible quiz or whatever. And we said, what kind of things do you think makes God angry? We might not have mentioned something like this. Mm. That this sort of thing, what what was it about that what the Pharisees were doing that made him angry and deeply distressed at this? Because it was uh, at their stubborn hearts, because yeah. they refused. Because he had they'd had this the same, this, if you like, discussion or this same encounter before, where he where they had done something on the Sabbath. He'd already said to them, "I am the Lord of the Sabbath." And yeah. already, you know, he already said to them, "You know, this the Sabbath. You know, man was not made for the Sabbath." He said this to them, and yet here here they were again going over this same issue again yeah. and it was just like this more this greater concern for their rules than for you know this man's um you know his healing and, and, he, and yes, his uh, deliverance yes. and this was the, something that makes god angry so i think when we see some things like this we have to take note of things like this is yeah. because obviously we don't want to do things that anger the lord or That's cause right. any distress or things like that so take watching our hearts making sure that we yeah. know God doesn't Absolutely. have to keep coming and back about these things and keep saying, and we're still stubbornly, like you said, in pride. It's yeah. a pride, isn't it? Spirit of yes, pride. It don't is, want yeah. to accept mm. that you're wrong or the way mm. that you're, you're thinking is wrong or what you're doing is wrong. And you stubbornly hold on to what, even in the face of, um, you know, evidence that, that cannot be mm. denied, you hold on to the way you're thinking yeah. because of the pride. And we want to, we want to humble ourselves. We don't want to, to fall into, into this. Sin. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that pride and that stubbornness of hearts, you know, led to murder you know murderous intentions it says that then the pharisees went out and began to plot with the herodians how they might kill jesus you know all he was doing was going around doing good mm -hmm. and we, we we said last week i think you know it started in their in their minds you know jesus knew what they were thinking and he addressed it then then they started you know they started accusing and speaking out and and plot and now they're plotting for his murder so yeah you've got the um if we don't nip these um things in mm. the bud even in ourselves you know they can they can escalate and they can spread they can influence and um but yeah god is lord of our hearts and uh, he yeah. will help us and he he gives us his holy spirit and to um to nudge us and to remind us if we're you know um if we're moving in ways that are not pleasing to him but let's just um commit it to the lord would you pray pastor akin yes thank you thanks 
Yes, Father, we just want to thank you again for your word. We thank you for the, the power in your word. We thank you for the authority that is in your word. And uh, yeah. we just want to, to thank you, Lord, that um, that you came to set the captives free. You came to heal yeah. us, Lord. There, there are no limits. You know, you don't choose special days. Every day, any time, we can come to you, Lord, and you, you will never turn us away. And so uh, we just want to thank you for your word, Lord. We thank mm. you for these examples that we see of your goodness, yeah. of your mercy and your grace and your great desire to have a relationship with us and to bless us. And so we just pray for all of our listeners right now, Lord, that mm. you would just come afresh upon all of our hearts, Lord. Breathe afresh upon us by your spirit to yes, let Lord. your kingdom come and your will be done in our lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Pastor Akin. Thanks for thank tonight. You, and thank you, everyone, for joining us. We'll see you next week as we carry on. God bless you. Have a brilliant week, everyone. Okay. Bye, everyone. Good, Good night. Bless.